YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well we're running through the restoration here of our um, 1967 Massey Ferguson 135 and it's got a Perkins AD3152 engine in it and we've got the head off and that and part, as part of the restoration um, we actually need to pull the injection pump off. So. <clears throat> I thought this would be a good opportunity to show how to time the pump to get it off. We can actually see the piston, because we have the head off, we can actually see the piston, what it's doing, and we have a, a mark on the flywheel here that we can line up on and, and hone in on. So, um, and we can actually see the camshaft here, see if the valves would be rocking or not. So, um, follow along as part of the series on the 135. We'll put quite a bit of time into timing the pump now. Getting the pump off is one thing, but if we do it right, I can show you how you can just pop the pump back on, do up three bolts here, a few bolts in there, and you're finished. So follow along. I hope you enjoy it, and um, I hope it helps you out sometime. Right, well, in this frame, that's if, this, if the light's settling for us. Three... Right, well in this frame here, you can see the fuel injection pump and I've got an arrow coming down here in chalk and there's a rubber plug that sits in the backing plate of the engine. Now mine's all perished and yours probably will be too. You can buy them. And we, if we take this out, That will give us access to the back of the flywheel and hopefully I can film some marks in there for you. We're going to have a go. That's the rubber plug. That just keeps the rubbish out. We'll put a new one in this tractor. Um, I don't like them dirty like that. Now, <coughs> on the side of the pump here there's a diamond plate that a 5 16th AF spanner fits. Or a shifter. <laughs> what do you call them? Crescent wrenches in America, maybe? Craftsman spanner or something? But anyway, we need to undo, undo this plate off the side and that gives us access to some more timing marks. And I've got a little tin up there to pop them into. There we go. So the, and that gives us access to timing marks down in the side further. And we also need to come around the front here and on the oil filler, where the oil filler is, can you see that? Yep. There's a plate on the front here that gives us access to the bolts that hold the pump on. Um, sometimes the radiator hose comes in real close around here. We've got the radiator out of this tractor at the time being, so hopefully we can film the whole lot for you nicely. And that there should just bump off. It's just a just a tin housing so don't go prying big bars into it and making it all all uneven so that can go in the tin with the bolt and you can see down in the front there there's three bolts so you have three bolts that hold the pump on and you also have a little dowel pin down here so um, if when the pump when the engine's set up to take the pump off if you don't turn the engine, that pump can only go on in one place. You can't bugger it up. <coughs> Pardon me, so... <coughs> I 
I'll make a little bit of room here. Now, we'll come up high. And we can turn the engine over because we don't have a cylinder head on it. So, being a four cylinder, uh, sorry, a three cylinder engine. And look, the same goes for a four cylinder engine. Most of the stuff I'm showing you here, if you have a, uh, this is a Perkins A D3152, which means direct injection, 152 cubic inch. So the A, <coughs> The AD3 means direct injecting, um, three cylinder. And there's an A3152 and that's indirect injection. But look, the same thing matters. So, so we know that when you set the timing up on your pump, you set it up to number one top dead centre. So number one top dead centre, number one's counting from the radiator. So that's top dead centre there. Now being a four stroke engine, I'll just try and soak up some of this rubbish out of the top of the piston here. Um, being a four stroke engine, this can either be on the compression stroke when you want it to be firing just before you come up to compression, or it can be the exhaust stroke where it's just come up and it's just pushed the exhaust out of the engine. So, <clears throat> so how do we know? Well, there's a couple of ways of knowing, and on this engine here, I'll try and get down the back. Now we have number one piston up. Um, you can see on this engine here, the cam lobes are down. Let's see if I can get it in focus for you properly the cam lobes are down and if we if that was in the wrong position you can see the cam lobes are up so the pistons back on top but your valves are rocking so <clears throat> but you'll say to me well that's fair enough Lance but the um, if I've got the cylinder head on and I've got the rocker gear on, how do I tell? Well, there's a couple of ways of doing it. And look, one of them is if you have the tappet cover off, just make sure you have valve clearance on number one here. Um, if it's a four cylinder engine, just make sure the valves on number four are rocking. But, um, but what we're looking for here is in the direction of rotation of the engine, we need the piston to come up and we need the cam lobes to be facing away. Okay, I've been trying to get a get a picture or get something dialed into the hole. I've been in there with breaker lean and all that. But <clears throat> with the I think you can just see. You can see better there, I think. You can just see 24. 28 and all that through this hole here. Now the engine doesn't fire right up on top dead centre. Now if you come around and there's TDC there that's, that's your actual top dead centre then when you come around you see 20 24 28 etc and as I understand it where my white arrow is in the middle there what's left of my white arrow um, that's where your timing mark is you set that to 18 or 20 or 24 or whatever so you know where to put the pump back but <clears throat> like I said before with a four stroke engine Gee, I wish I'd stay still with that bloody torch. Um, with a four-stroke engine, you can be one full turn out of the crankshaft. So how do we how do we know? If we if we come round to top dead centre on the thing, 
on the on the flywheel here, and we've got the tappet cover on the fuel tank on the the whole tractor put together. You can see this little hole here, so you run it round the top dead centre, and then with the plate off the side of the injection pump, you have a look in there. So we'll reposition and have a look there for you. So we know in the back on the flywheel we're somewhere around top dead centre and we're probably about 18 or 20 degrees before top dead centre, around the 20 mark. And then we take this plate off the side of the injection pump here and you'll see this flat on the circlip here. Now the flat edge of the circlip, if you look up in the hole, which I can't get the camera up to, um, the other side of the circlip's rounded. So the bottom part of the circlip has a flat on it. Then you'll also notice there's a letter E there. That is when your pump fires. So if you turn the crank over and get that E lined up as close as you can to the end of that circlip, what I like to do then is take the chalk, we don't move that again, we do not turn the engine from now on. Okay, then we come back here and if we look at that there, if we put our, put our arrow back there and then we put a mark on the flywheel in line with that, so that looks to be about 22 degrees before, I keep putting the light in so I can see it but then you can't see it. That looks to be about 24 degrees before top dead centre. That is lined up, sorry it looks a bit crooked here on the monitor but um, look that's, when I look straight down in from this angle we're pretty well spot on. So, <clears throat> so if it said that you needed to time your engine at 20 degrees, well you would line up number 20 on the flywheel here and you would adjust the pump, turn it on the slides until you come to the right mark. So we know that that's on the right mark now, or the mark that we want it to be on the back. And I'll just show you how you can adjust the timing if you need to. Now before you take the pump off, there's, there's three mounting screws here. Before you take the pump off, you might notice that there's a timing mark here, there's a little line there and there's a corresponding line comes out into the timing cover here. So when this pump has been set up at number E inside and those two marks are lining up, you know you're pretty close to where it was in the spec. Now um, when, the, when the blokes at the pump shop set something up, yeah, they, they can actually scribe that mark in there for you. but. If you're out a little bit and you want to adjust your timing, you can actually just turn this pump a little bit. So I'll, I'll zoom back out. We'll loosen this off a little bit. And we can, we can rotate this pump back and forth. And so if you had a number 18 or a number 20 on the flywheel in the hole here, if you had an 18 or 20 and you found a specification that said it should be 22 and you lined it up at 22 and this little E there didn't line up, well then you have the option of undoing this pump here and rotating it. Now, there we go, that's come loose. So. You can adjust the timing by turning that one way or another. This one needs to be a bit. So you can adjust it back and forth. Now the engine hasn't changed position. Um, we've left the engine as it is. We'll, um, I'll try and focus down on the little mark once more. 
and you'll see what difference that makes. Bring it around so you can see the circlet. So we know that was lined up before. Where are we? There we go. <laughs> it's hard working across the camera and lining it up, but you can see the pump shaft stays put, like the E stays in the same place, but by turning the pump, you can actually change, advance or retard the timing. Now, so once you've got the mark at the back, and you come to put your pump back on, you sit the pump on like I have, you make sure the mark at the back on the flywheel here hasn't moved, and if that hasn't moved, you line up the end of the circlip, the flat, in this case, with the letter E, and you tighten the pump up, and away you go. So now we've loosened all this off, we can I'll come back again. I'm all over the shop, aren't I? So we can undo all these bolts. The pump won't come off yet because we have a timing gear on the front of it. So we'll come around the front. And that's those three bolts that we were looking at before with the pointer and you'll notice that the the or not the pointer the dowel is facing up this way a little bit so what we need to do from there is we just undo these three screws now a word of warning don't ask me how I know <laughs> I like to jam a little bit of rag down there because if you drop one of these screws you got to pull that timing cover off and find it. And there's a screw and a flat and a spring washer on each one. So we undo those three. And I have the washer there too, so we know we've got all the goodies. And now I can take this out, and this pump can just be withdrawn from the back. And there it is, there. And there's what the little dowel goes in. So you can't muck this part up. Now, if we come around the back and look up the hole with the trusty torch once more, you can see the dowel. So once you do your initial timing, you can't muck it up. So there you go, I've got the camera. <laughs> Down on a dicky angle, but anyway, that's fine. It's only my ugly dial. So, um, so now I've shown you how to take the injection pump off. Later on in the restoration, we'll be putting it back on again. But if in the meantime you want to pull your pump off, do a seal in it or whatever, and put it back on, it's the same thing. You you turn your engine to where you think it's on top dead centre. Um, pull the side off your pump and look for that alphabet letter it can be it's an e on the three cylinder perkins but i've had john deere's that it's a h and massey ferguson's that it's a g and things like that so the number or the letter of the alphabet that lines up is not critical the important part is to know where your crankshaft is and know what letter lined up now if, even if you don't want to go through checking the timing, you know, when you put it back on, you can do a shortcut to this job. And look, the shortcut is make sure the little line where the pump bolts on is lined up. Roll the engine over until you get to letter G, letter H, letter F. There's quite a few letters around that rotor. And 
I like to have it on top dead centre and check the timing when I'm going back in, but if you know that you've pulled that pump off with letter H, letter Q, whatever, lined up with that circlip, you know that was right, and that timing mark on the pump was right, and the engine's not going to be turned, you're laughing. Pull the pump off and get into it. You can pull the pump off, do a repair, put the pump on on that same letter, line the thing up, crank it up, and it'll start and it'll run fine. The only place you come in trouble, into trouble with that is if you've inadvertently turned the engine over for some reason. Um, which isn't such a big deal on some tractors, like on this, the injection pump can only bolt up onto that gear in one place. It's not like you have multi splines or multi teeth to choose from. This timing gear in the, in the front there, with the pump out, you cannot move that gear around and turn it a tooth if you, if you had it out. So if you don't turn the engine, that gear will be where, where you left it. Um, so putting it back on, check your timing, and I'm going to actually go and find the book, and um, I'll find the book and I'll just make sure, because this is an old tractor, um, not in 67, and um, who knows that it hasn't been timed wrong all this time. Um, it did start, no worries at all, so it can't have been too far off and it had plenty of power, but um, it looked like it was about 22 degrees before top dead centre it was firing, where, um, <coughs> pardon me, I thought I read last week it should be 18 degrees, so it may have been advanced a little bit, and sometimes advancing the fuel injection pump on an old engine will help it, um, it'll, it'll make it go a bit better, it allows for a little bit of wear in the drive train, you know, in your timing gear train, as, as they get old they get a bit of wear in them. But um, hopefully that's enough to get your injection pump off and back on again. We will put it back on later on, but um, in the meantime, have a go. Hopefully I've explained it well. Um, <coughs> pardon me, put things in comments if you have any questions. <coughs> oh, pardon me. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. We will be running through this injection pump on my bench, resealing it. So anyway, hope, it's, hope that was some help to you, and have a go, eh?